Welcome to Military Faith and Spiritual Resilience. This is Elizabeth Fulgaro. With me today is Erin Nichols, nutrition and fitness coach and Gold Star wife. Hi, Erin. Hi, Elizabeth. Thanks for being here today. I'm so happy to be here. Can you begin for us to share a little bit about yourself, please? Yeah, well, I'm from Northern California, raised in the Sacramento area in the suburbs. Uh, I actually grew up coming down to the Central Valley in Turlock, where we are right now. So it's it's both foreign and familiar as it's changed a lot in the last, you know, 25 years or so, probably since I've, I've spent any significant time down here. Uh, I'm a nutrition and fitness coach, as you said, but I actually have, my educational background is in speech language pathology, which I went back to school for, um, which we'll probably get into the the timing of that and all that later. Uh, but yeah, I'm a happy aunt of particularly my my sister's kids. Um, unfortunately, I don't I don't get to see my late husband's kids all that often, but um, I get to be a big part of my two nieces and nephews life, um, seeing them at least twice a week. Tell me a little bit about what's most important to you then. Family. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like family first. And uh, knowing a little bit about you, I think that's figured prominently for you for a long, long time. Yeah. So, So this jump from, and we may be getting ahead of ourselves, but this jump from speech pathology to nutrition and fitness coach, is there a story there? There is. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of jumps into the middle of the story. Would you like to take us back to the beginning? Where, wherever you want to go <laughs> is where is where we can, we can start. I, I was even, um, before Sam was, uh, before his last deployment, we were kind of, you know, we, he was going to be separating from the Marine Corps after that. And... We were in a really similar place to where we had been when we were like 18, where we didn't really know what we wanted to be when we grew up. We just knew it was going to be together. And we were just four years older. (laughs) Not much had changed being in that four years in the Marine Corps had given us like housing and medical and, um, you know, money to pay the bills and live. But as far as advancement in life, not much had actually happened. We were just older and we still didn't really know what we wanted to do. And so after being, you know, 400, 380, 400 miles away from our families in, uh, in at Camp Pendleton in Oceanside, Northern San Diego County, uh, compared to our families in Sacramento, we thought, well, Reno over the mountains is close enough, but far enough away from from our family. And we would kind of be able to establish our own adult selves there. And I was actually planning to study nutrition at University of Nevada, Reno. So, and I'm not even sure why I was that into it at that time. I think I just kind of didn't know what else to do other than like English (laughs) or teaching kind of things. So you were interested in nutrition or you were kind of looking at nutrition a long time ago. A long time ago. I, yeah, I was. And I'd always really been interested in physical therapy, too. So the only reason I kind of did speech therapy instead of physical therapy is because I was often the patient. And so I thought, well, I don't know if I want to put all my educational eggs in my fragile injury-prone basket and then not be able to, to, to physically be able to do my job. Well, speech-language pathology was, it was similar uh, enough um, and after my husband's traumatic brain injury, the neurological aspect of it really interested me. And then we had uh, one one speech therapist in particular who was amazing. And she was kind of my inspiration for taking that route. And even when I was in school, I was able to go back. She was in the Bay Area, and I was able to go back and do some of my uh, like clinical observation hours with her and be back in the hospital where we spent six months and uh, work with her. And even when, when I expressed my interest while uh, Sam was still a patient at that hospital, because she knew that that's what I wanted to do now, she would kind of teach me things as we, as we went along. And 
um, even observing other patients because there would usually be, usually be a roommate. And so I was able to learn a lot before I even got to school. That's, that's really cool. That's really cool how the sto- it's cool how stories kind of develop, right? In life, the different threads and how they connect and reconnect. Mm-hmm. So you're mentioning Sam. Yes. <clears throat> I think it's probably time to introduce listeners to Sam. Yeah. So who was Sam and how did you first meet? Sam is my late husband. We, so Sam was a year younger than me. And so I was a year ahead of him in school, and we were both in ROTC, Air Force Junior ROTC in high school, at Castro Bay High School in Orangevale. And before the school year starts every year, we would have this thing called summer leadership. So it's kind of like like our version of basic training. So the incoming freshmen would come in, they would kind of learn the ropes, they would earn their first rank and some uh, some ribbons and things like that. And then it was more of a leadership opportunity um, at different degrees for the sophomores through seniors. So as he was an incoming incoming freshman, I was a sophomore. And um, I'm not sure how many days into summer leadership it was early on. And I was standing under the tree outside of the ROTC room in the shade. And Uh, I guess I was standing there alone because I don't remember anybody else being around. And this James Dean looking very cute boy with devastating blue eyes and floppy hair comes over to me and introduces himself, says, I'm Sam Nichols, and kissed me on the cheek. Wow, what a start. How old old were you? Uh, I was 14, and he would have been, like, days from turning 14. His birthday was August 12th, and summer leadership was, like, the first two weeks of August. So where does it go from there? So we ended up one of the semesters, we had, like, two terms. Um, and one one half of the year, we were in the same flight, the same class for ROTC, And so we spent like a little bit of time together, but we were just like any other classmates, just kind of like friendly with each other. Um, Not really friends. He had a girlfriend for most of um, his freshman year, a girl who was in my class actually, um, and not in ROTC. And yeah, like I had a crush on him. He was cute. And he was one of the only like cute boys, honestly, that kind of paid much attention to me, (laughs) I guess. Um, And then it wasn't until the next summer that I just randomly got a call from him, um, like sometime in July, uh, asking if I wanted to go out. So we, we were scheduled to go to Arcadia Fun Center, which is now, has been bulldozed and now is becoming a, a housing community in Citrus Heights. And so we were going to go like miniature golfing and do whatever. Well, the day before that, I was in the car with my mom and her cell phone rang, her um, like Motorola flip phone with the antenna that you pull out and the leather case and all that. And it was Sam. And he's like, hey, I'm with Jake. Uh, You want to go miniature golfing with us? Okay, cool. We basically had like a practice date with our friend Jake. <laughs> That's great. So, That's great. <laughs> Jake was in my class, but Sam and Jake knew each other from middle school. Um, so they were a year apart as well. And Jake and I were really good friends. And uh, so we had like this practice date with Jake and we, we miniature golfed. And then we went across the street over to the Sunrise Mall and we went to Baskin Robbins and Sam asked me if I wanted to share a Mocha Java Blast. And I did not like coffee, but I liked the idea of, like, sharing a drink with him. Oh, yes. (laughs) So I had the, like, milkshake with two straws diner kind of image in my head. And so we walked around with Jake around the mall sharing this drink that I didn't like. Very good. (laughs) (laughs) Did it help you like coffee? No, it wasn't for many years after. <laughs> I, I love coffee now, but I just think, you know, 
the things you do for, you know, the boy you like or, or whatever. And then the next day we had our actual date. Um, and, uh, had a good time. <laughs> so, so where did it go from there? Cause obviously it continued. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we had a you know pretty good makeout session that, that next day. Um, and then we just kind of, you know, dated each other. And then at some point it became official and actually we had, it was in, um, I think it was in October or November, we had this drill competition every year where for ROTC, we would go to uh, one of the other local high schools and compete in all sorts of different marching related um, categories. And uh, we won, our, our, our school won the sweepstakes trophy. So we won lots of individual trophies and we won, we won like the whole tournament. And my mom was like the ROTC mom and she, you know, drove on all these things and would give boys haircuts and make sure that they're going to pass inspection, all that kind of stuff. And so we were celebrating at Leatherby's in Citrus Heights, which is Leatherby's is like home cooking in my family. And we had our big sweepstakes trophy sitting on the table, and there were probably five other ROTC kids, including Sam and myself, and then my little sister was probably there too. And we were kind of wrapping things up, and um, a couple kids had like gone to the bathroom, and Sam pulls out a pen from his pocket and grabs a napkin, and he writes something on the napkin, and then he slides it over to me, and it was like we were in a negotiation, and I look at the napkin and it says, so do you want to make us official? Very cute. And so I wrote very much so, slid it back. And he says, so right now, slides it to me. Yes. Slide it back to him. And that was it. So, oh, you know what? That was, it was October 30th, but that's today, huh? <laughs> it was like, yeah, it was October 30th because our, um, later that night, a, a ROTC friend of ours was having a, like a Halloween party and then, which we were exhausted. My mom d did all the drop offs and then, you know, took us to that, to that thing. But then the next day, like our first kind of like official thing that we did as boyfriend and girlfriend, other than that party was go trick or treating. So it was the last time I ever went trick or treating. Very sweet. Right. Yeah. So what year was that? 98, maybe. Okay, so you're still in high school at this point? Yeah, I was, this was right before my junior year of high school. So you were together a long time. Yeah. So I guess that would have been 99. So I graduated in 2001. So yeah, 98, 99, or 99, 2000, 2000, 2001. So yeah. So you stayed together through high school? Stayed together through high school and then... A few weeks after I graduated, because, you know, I was a year ahead of him, he actually broke up with me. He what? He broke up with me. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. With me? I know. How could he? Um, I think we were, we had feelings that were way too strong for our emotional intelligence and capacity at the time. That makes and, sense. And certainly experience. He was my first boyfriend. I wasn't his first. Um, and it was a lot. <laughs> it was just a lot to handle. Um, and so we, uh, you know, he broke my heart, um, broke up. And then, I don't know, a month later or something, it wasn't even that long. We started to kind of like hang out here and there. And then it was just kind of toying with me because we would, you know, we would get together and then we'd like fool around or whatever. And then um, I felt like I started to feel like, right, he's getting what he wants. And, but we're, because we're not back together, like nothing that needed to change was changing. And so... After a few times, I was like, I can't do this. Either we're together or we're not, um, which I was really pleased to hear later on that that broke his heart. Oh, <laughs> so it brought him to a new decision point, it, maybe? 
Yeah, well, and and then we didn't really talk for several months. So several months later, so we broke we broke up in June. So like over that summer, a little bit, we saw each other, and then in November, the very beginning of November, I believe it would have been, we just ran into each other at the Sunrise Mall, and just out of the blue, ran into each other. Hey, you know whatever pleasantries it was really nice you know gave him a hug and all that and then I immediately went into American Eagle was right there went into American Eagle grabbed I don't know what some sort of piece of clothing and went into the changing room and cried oh escape quick yeah yeah and I was just just trying so hard to keep it together yeah talking to him and uh but then he called me a day or two later on the phone and we talked for like two or three hours and it felt like the old Sam and Aaron. And in high school, like it was Sam and Aaron, which always makes me think of the book Lord of the Flies and the the, the twin characters. Their names are written as one name, Sam and Eric. Yes. We were Sam and Aaron. And that was part of the problem. Because we were like the showpiece. We were Sam and Aaron. And we needed, even though it was brief and we were still very young, that time apart allowed us to become Sam and Aaron. And so as painful as it was, that time apart was really important. So after we talked, he said, you know, like, yeah, we should we should get together soon. And so a couple days later, uh, I was going to community college and I called him and said, you know, I get off, I'm out of school at like one something or whatever. Um, do you want me to come pick you up from school and we can hang out in the afternoon? Because he got out at 2.45 and so that was the plan. So do that. I get there um, back to CASA to go pick him up and I'm walking toward the ROTC room and we see each other and we're like walking towards each other and it's about to be this like momentous like cue the slow music in the slow motion right and then our friend jessica aaron hey what are you doing here and just completely like interrupts the whole thing (laughs) and we're both looking at each other like ah did she really just do that so i went in i went into the rtc room and like talked to people and hung out or whatever and then we went back to his house and um, his bed was a futon that was always in the couch position. And so it was really good for watching movies. And so we sat there and watched some movie. I have no idea what it was, but over the course of the movie, we just were like inching closer and closer together. And by the end of the movie, his arm was around me and he, like the movie ended and he looked down at me and I looked up at him and I think he asked me something about like how I like the movie or something like that. Um, and I have no idea, but then we kissed and we were together ever since. Sam and Aaron. Yes. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. So will you stay for the next episode to share more with us? Absolutely. Thank you, Aaron.